discuss the main issues of the day with George Pascoe Watson, former political editor over there at The Sun. Of course, afternoon to you, George. Uh, nice to have you with us as ever. Um, quite difficult. I was trying to work out what is Rishi Su who is Rishi Sunak playing to with this policy? Uh, because that ultimately would be key to any general election. If it's about the politics and he thinks he can get a few people on board, one would assume those people are kind of already on board. Who's he aiming this at? Well, you're right, Ian, this is all about politics. We have a general election coming up next year. Who knows when it could be, could even be as early as the spring. And uh, the Prime Minister needs to be very, very clear that he's on the right side of common sense and the side of the people he thinks are likely to vote for him or could be persuaded to vote for him. And we know, we've done polling at Portland Communications over the weekend, which shows that apart from immigration, uh, net zero issues are quite high yeah. on floating voters' uh, minds. Uh, he's been quite well advised from the polling that um, an issue like electric vehicles, getting rid of uh, diesel and petrol engines, irritates a lot of voters, uh, and that he wants to be very, very clear that he's on the side of uh, ordinary working men and women around the country. So he's taken this decision less, I think, maybe for what you would think um, from a net zero perspective, but much more from a can we create elephant traps for the Labour Party? Yeah. Because if he's able to say, we will do this, and the Labour Party don't, then there's a, a division, a wedge between him and Labour. What he's trying to do right now to the electorate is send a very big message. With me, you get X. With them, you get Y. And that division will yeah. help clarify who he is and what the Conservative Party stands for. Yeah. And he we're, thinks he's doing that. We're, we're on the side of you know hardworking people and you know some things are unachievable, unaffordable right now and only the Conservatives can address... Blah, blah, blah. I get that, but of course he's upset the motoring industry. We know, I alluded to a second ago, Ford, and I'm sure there will be others, are saying, hang on a second, you know, we're gearing up for this and now you tell us this. And that's a very real concern to some people in the Conservative Party is, you know, whose side are we on here? Yes, we're on the side of the hardworking men and women of this country just trying to go about doing their daily job. They need their cars to do that and they don't need to scrap them. But at the same time, big business matters uh, yeah. because they are the employers in this country. And the other point is, if you are to get to net zero genuinely in 2050, you do need industry to lead the way. And that requires huge sums of money in investment. It requires hiring different types of people. It requires the universities churning out differently educated uh, young people to come into uh, factories and uh, engineering labs to design the batteries and design the engines, and design all sorts of things for the future. Sure. And that doesn't come cheap. That requires investment. And that's why the chair of Ford has said we need consistency above all else. But I think in a balanced situation, Rishi has had to make a decision. The most important thing for me is to put Labour in a difficult position. Does Labour support my decision? Yeah. And if they don't, then that's a win, because that's definition, and I'm on the side of the people. There it is. George, listen, sadly your line is slightly getting the better of us, but George Pascoe Watson, former political editor at The Sun, thank you to him for some meat on the bones of that one. It is, as George said, it's, there's an elephant trap scenario going on here. We're looking after hard-working people who are driving around, working, using their cars, vehicles, vans, trying to install a gas boiler, etc. They don't need any extra expense. We'll just do what's, what needs to be done. And Labour aren't doing that. The reverse, of course, of this. Now, of course, if you couldn't give a, a toss about environmental mental policies or green issues which many people don't then th that's one thing although this by the way doesn't get rid of net zero this is really just a different way of you know they're still going to get to net zero 2050 net zero etc that bit doesn't change uh, but if you do have some interest in environmental matters the conservative party have just announced they are not the party of the environment what does it do for the voter base so it is, as George says, I think this is tactical. I think this is short-term tactics. We will look after the average working man and woman. We're not going to burden people with extra cost on fundamentals like cars and boilers. And there may be more. We'll get the, uh, the full details in his speech a little later. You will hear all of that on Talk TV, of course. Uh, but in terms of the wider issue, net zero remains, of course. And the Conservative Party have marked themselves out as the party not to be listened to when it comes to environmental issues. And that may be, t to you, may well be, well, that's fantastic. Brilliant. I don't, couldn't care. But how does that play to the wider electorate? Do you support Rishi Sunak rolling back on this?